I have this narrative. I have this story of Valentine's Day in my head because it doesn't fit what society says it should. And so I've gone the opposite. And I'm like, well, what if I actually kind of enjoy the day and just like try this love thing all mushy, but not that it's not towards a romantic partner because I don't have a romantic partner yeah. currently. Well, hello everyone. Hi listeners and viewers to Queer Relationships, Queer Joy. I am Keely C. Helmick, one of your hosts. I'm your other host, Melissa DeSecurant. Now that the traditional holiday has passed for all of the listeners and viewers, <laughs> we are celebrating all of the different forms of love outside of romantic relationships celebrating love throughout February, just as we are also celebrating Black History Month. Want to recognize that. And just talking about love in general, which is, I mean, obviously what we already do anyways. But before we get into that, because I have a cute story that that prompts this. And I'm also just want to thank everyone who who may be listening, who attended our workshop this past week. We had a great queer relationship workshop. I thought it went well. I enjoyed it. It was so fun to be able to connect with some of you like real time and have room for questions and feedback and a lot of resource sharing, which I always love to see. So yeah, lots of good energy coming off of that group. I hope we are doing many more in the future. Yeah. So quick introductions. My name is Keely C. Helmick. I am the owner of Connected Therapy Collective. I am a queer, non-binary, femme, white, solo, practicing, dating, whatever that looks like. And also oh, a licensed professional counselor and certified sex therapist. And I'm Melissa DeSegurant. I am a marriage and family therapist and licensed professional counselor working with Connective Therapy Collective. I am white, bisexual, polyamorous, gender fluid, a solo poly. Happy to have you. Yay. So I am just digging. So specifically articles, people are probably seeing posts. And so when they hear this episode, we'll have seen the posts around queering up Valentine's Day, queering love, queering up what it means to love. And I am curious, I have a cute story, but I also, Melissa, when you hear that, I want to hear what you have to say about what is it, what is, when you hear that, what do you think about queering up love? Well, I'll be honest, the first thing that comes to mind is my own <laughs> Valentine's Day, which consists of me and two cats. So that feels pretty queer. I'm also thinking about <laughs> repotting all my plants. So not to be very stereotypical, but that's like, that's what first comes to my mind. When I step out of my own life, <laughs> I guess uh, when I hear queering up love, it makes me think of just creativity and fluidity and flexibility and moving away from rigid structures and definitions that are limiting of what love should look like and what counts and really embracing like drawing outside the lines. Drawing outside the lines. Okay. Well, I think we had some quotes from the workshop that we talked about what love is, and we were referring specifically to romantic love, but it could also be applied to love, which Eric from, I don't have the quote in front of me, but the definition of love being that we are here to help support another person's spiritual growth, spiritual in a broad sense, not spiritual necessarily just religiously, but just the whole being in that support of a whole person and really noticing that. And I, you know, so I read a, an article from bitch, um, from bitch media, and it talked about some of the, the great quote that I loved was to be queer is to open up different types of love in your life. And so the article really talked about the ways that queer culture, queer community redefines family. So that kind of, that type of love and redefining, you know, we have the queer platonic relationships and really taking the opportunity to look at love in all facets. Mm -hmm. And so my cute story, I am obviously single right now. And I will say, and I don't know how other people listening feel, but Valentine's Day is definitely like this mixed bag of 
all types of experiences as a young person. I will say, Melissa, I don't know if you can dive with this. In high school, I, my group of friends and I definitely had moments in theater where we would have Valentine's Day, we'd, we'd wear all black. <laughs> yeah. Like protesting <laughs> Valentine's Day. <laughs> we were totally anti-Valentine's Day. <laughs> and so <laughs> I've gone from that to, well, I ended a marriage on Valentine's Day. That was, that was an interesting situation. And as I was thinking this morning and what inspired this, there's been multiple things that inspired this, but I was in the shower and I got out of my shower and went into my bedroom and on my bed was a bunch of flowers and a handwritten note oh. from my 14 year old child. I love that. That's so beautiful. And I started bawling. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the day. <laughs> 7 30 in the morning. And it was this mix of like, I mean, it was totally happy tears, but also it was this recognition of really embracing what I've been saying, because I, I will admit I am a sappy romantic. I've done all the things based on what society told us we should want. Yeah. I, I got you. I, I'm there too. <laughs> and so, and then it gets even better because in the note, she says, mom, even if you never have another romantic relationship, you were very loved. I feel so found. I can't. Like, how did I just not, how did I even get to work without just bawling all day? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it caught me thinking. And it, what I noticed is this reframing. You know, we talk about narratives. And we talk about reframing narratives and queering things up is, is changing narrative of things, changing the escalator, you know, the relationship escalator. And I really just recognize that I have this narrative. I have this story of Valentine's day in my head because it doesn't fit what society says it should. And so I've gone the opposite and I'm like, well, what, what if I what if I actually kind of enjoy the day and just like try this love thing all like all mushy, but not that it's not towards a romantic partner. Cause I don't have a romantic partner yeah. currently. I hear you kind of saying embracing the energy and spirit of love and feeling like what that feels like, but also then how that expands out to so many different people that isn't just this cookie cutter romantic this is my Valentine kind of love. Yeah. And like how much of us did we, how many, you know, I'll own it that I fell into this cis heteronormative patriarchal view that if I don't have this romantic love on this day, then, oh, I'm the person eating ice cream, <laughs> crying into my ice cream, watching TV. Like those are the two, it's just like, it, it reminds me of the virgin whore dynamic. Like you're either a virgin or a whore. So you're mm -hmm. either in a romantic relationship and let's call it, you're either in a relationship with a cis hetero man and, or a cis hetero woman mm -hmm. and have all the romance or you're crying on your couch sad because you don't have that yeah right because you must be if you don't have that you must be sad yeah not necessarily <laughs> <laughs> and of Me course for example. Like, <laughs> i thought of you of course <laughs> i'm not driving to work and i'm like oh my gosh melissa's gonna be like what what can we play off of this solo you know journey <laughs> yeah this is definitely a whole like i love myself day <laughs> today <laughs> Hey everybody, Cardinal the Cuddly Cryptid here to let you know that we now have a free relationship check-in worksheet you can get to help you put into practice. Some of the things we talk about here are in queer relationships, queer joy. It has five exercises to help you determine personal goals from relationship goals, identify possible power dynamics, and gauge your level of vulnerability in your relationships. Complete it alone or with your person of choice. 
find it at bit.ly slash QRQJ worksheet or by clicking the link in the show notes. Okay, back to Keely and Melissa. Well, and so I wonder, you know, talking about this and the topic or bringing this into a topic for listeners is how do we do this? Okay, so we can lip service. Yeah, we can talk all day, every day, see all the memes, see the posts of like, love yourself. I mean, the other classic going on right now is this image of flowers and an image of vibrators. <laughs> So instead of getting flowers this Valentine's Day, this Valentine's month, getting vibrators instead, which I mean, could apply to all year because you can get flowers and vibrators all year long. <laughs> right, right. Well, actually, I'm glad you just said that because that's one thing that was kind of occurring to me is that if you're not a person who is actively practicing self-love like day to day. Practicing it one day on Valentine's Day might feel very artificial <laughs> and, yeah. and, and fake and forced. And that doesn't mean don't do it, but it also might be an invitation that this needs to be a practice. <laughs> if it feels really foreign to you, perhaps you're not tapping into that enough. For me, this doesn't feel strange to have this day of self-love. And, you know, I mean, I've talked about some of the dates I've taken myself on recently or self-affirming shopping sprees, you know, and to me, this is an extension of that with a little bit more energy in the air around it. Yeah. And I think about the ways, so if we're broadening love, just in general, focusing on self-love, then what does that look like if if we are someone who is looking to have romantic love but also if we are already in a relationship or already have relationships that are romantic and or sexual but then also how does all of this coincide into improving all of our relationships like we're saying yes with ourselves and how are we changing that dynamic or just improving it, shifting it for all of our relationships. Well, I think, gosh, think about when we have that energy in our systems of I, I'm resourced, I'm happy. I'm, I mean, if we can't get to the, the self-love place, say that's not a familiar framework of what that energy feels like. Think about when you've slept really well <laughs> and you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm just, I feel awake. I feel rested and you're full. Think about how that changes every single interaction you have throughout that morning. Versus when you're really depleted and you're really exhausted, right? I, like for me, <laughs> also not a morning person, <laughs> more information about me. I'm in a really grouchy, crabby mood if I'm not properly resourced. And so I don't think that this idea of self-love, as we've talked about so many times, takes away from loving other people and connecting. I think it enhances it. You know, the energy that we can walk around the world with and then share with other people, whether that's. We've talked about those one-off conversations with like the barista, you know, or the person that's doing the groceries, <laughs> you know, bagging the groceries for you. Certainly anyone that we talk to with more regularity, whether that's coworkers, friends, um, romantic partners even. But I really do think that when we can, when we can foster that kind of a self-love energy, and I, I think it naturally seeps out to everyone else that we co come in contact with. Yeah, and I, I, I still think people are going to be like, how do you do that? Do you have a favorite, I think about like heart opening or like, I, of course I go to meditation. Do you have a favorite heart opening meditation or a resource when you talk, when we talk about this like softening? Because I think that sometimes when we're looking at talking to folks about connection, it's that there's been some kind of trauma or experiences that have really shut people off from love or shut people off from loving again not just romantic but how are those relationships in the rest of your life how has trauma affected um ability to connect with self and connect with others yeah i wish there was a one size fits all like do this and then your trauma will be addressed but i do think it's really individualized i think if people are looking for more of a broad one size fits all type thing to try I would say look up love and kindness meditations. It's a very specific kind of a mindfulness meditation. It's quite repetitive, intentionally so, and it's specifically fostering self-love. Then you practice extending that out to someone else. 
someone else beyond that, someone else, maybe the whole entire universe. And it's, if you type that in Google, you'll find a million resources right away. Again, that's not a cure-all, but it is a practice in how we embody love, how we actually embody that. I think, yeah, there's also the trauma work and some of that's going to be the cognitive reframing and, and, you know, changing the narratives that you may have about love or about yourself or your lovability. That's all relevant too. But also the, the mindfulness, the body practices, where we're just embodying the, the kind of love we want to see in the world. Yeah, when you're saying that, I'm thinking about kind of revisiting some of the themes we had in the workshop, which were so great was how to do these things on a more consistent basis. I think that something that happens sometimes is where someone will be like, I want to be more connected to myself, or I want to form friendships, or I want to have better connections. And it becomes this piece of like, I want to do that right now, instead of trying to do it in the moment when it feels most intense versus how is this in a daily practice? How is this in a routine? How do we shift it up? And so what does it look like to extend love to ourselves and to others in a, in a smaller daily practice, which of course, yes, it could be a meditation. Um, it could be sending little notes. It could be, I mean, this is where like, I know classically affirmations, daily journaling, gratitude, but it is also shifting, like you said, how we talk to ourselves, how we talk about ourselves to ourselves, that voice in the back of our head, how we talk to other people, noticing that pause. I mean, the, the, the same skills that we talk about when communicating in a relationship, when communicating with someone else in like nonviolent communication style, it's also applied to this idea of increasing love and connection. Yeah, you know, and and when we're talking about the way that we talk to ourselves and that nonviolent communication, the other piece of this is we have to learn how to talk to our inner critic. We have to learn how to talk to that part of ourselves that's trying to knock ourselves down. Yes. Because so often our response is, oh, no, stop, stop, you know. And even I think even sometimes I see this in session when we're first practicing like in, in CBT, we had this intervention of thought stopping. So when you have an unwanted negative thought come in, how do you just stop it? But we can get really nasty and mean about that and almost shame ourselves. So we're actually creating more shame <laughs> and more tension, intense energy in our systems versus yes. meeting that part of ourselves with love, with nonviolent communication. Like, wow. Okay. You feel, for me, oftentimes when one of those like big negative narratives come out and it, it goes extreme, it doesn't even necessarily have to do for me with what's happening in the moment. It's like, I go to like, everyone hates you. <laughs> I hate the world. Like that's the most extreme. I hate everything. <laughs> I hate everything. And I'll say that out loud sometimes. And then I like catch myself. I'm like, what? And what that means for me is, oh, wow, we're feeling really vulnerable and feeling really insecure right now. That was really uncomfortable, huh? a much gentler way of talking to myself than why would you say that that's stupid stop saying that say something yeah. nice yeah the second one doesn't work well in the classic i mean the classic of self-compassion is that idea of how talk to yourself as you would talk to someone else would we sit there and look at a friend or a stranger we're sitting next to on the bench and be like you're being stupid <laughs> stop being stupid <laughs> you're an idiot like we wouldn't talk i mean we may talk about some people like that but we're you know using the model of how you would talk to a friend how you know self-compassion that beginning piece can be sometimes how we're talking to somebody else yeah yeah and you know i think to your point too yeah sometimes i think <laughs> some of my friends would be like yeah you talk to me all the that way all the time in a playful, friendly, whatever tone. But it, it reminds me of the point I brought up when we were interviewing Robin about like, watch out for the self-deprecating humor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Watch out. Because you know, it may be in the like, oh, I'm just giving myself a hard time. Perhaps that's not what yourself needs in this moment. Perhaps you need some genuine kindness. Well, and doing these things, taking the time to do these things and thinking about these things 
is part of getting off or never getting on the relationship escalator because this is the piece when we say queering up and changing things is is I almost said radicalizing out of is that extreme but just looking at things through a different lens and if we're starting with I think starting off with this self-love is then being like or just even just liking ourselves maybe it's sometimes it's just like liking ourselves that day that then oftentimes leads to not only interacting with people differently, but who we choose to interact with. Hey, hello, hi, Cardinal here, your behind the scenes buddy. You know what else goes on behind the scenes? As you like it, adult toy shop. Eco-friendly, fat-friendly, queer-friendly, they truly are for everybody and every body. Find them online at asyoulikeitshop.com and use code CTC Therapy. That's all one word at checkout for 10% off. That's CTC Therapy at asyoulikeitshop.com. Okay, back to the show. Gosh, when I'm thinking about my own previous impulses towards relationship escalator. There was a part of me that felt incomplete. I needed to find this partnership to prove yeah. my worthiness, to prove I'm in love, to prove I'm lovable, to prove I've got my life. To, I mean, to prove lots of different things. <laughs> but when we're really embracing the self-love piece, I feel very, and where I am now, right? I feel very fulfilled in my relationship with myself, meaning I am complete in partnership with myself. Do I hope to have other connections? Yes. And I actually do. <laughs> Again, because we're talking about like, I have so much love for my friends. I mean, I have very, very close, deep, meaningful relationships in my life with lots of people who I'm not romantic or sexual with necessarily. But when we're that filled up on our own, there... A, gosh, think about the energy again that we're bringing into connections. There's not this desperate need, like, please fill this part of me. Like, yeah, it's not a scarcity. It's not yeah. saying I have to have this. I need this. Like you can it's be fully complete. Yeah. Yes. It's like an abundance. We're showing up going like, look at all the stuff I got. What you got? You want to play? <laughs> like, what do I have? I have all this. And yes, simply, I don't have this one specific person. No one is fulfilling this romantic piece. Okay. That's okay. And that's how we're queering things up is saying like, okay, the idea of existing in this world and being a fully awesome human doesn't equate to whether or not you're connected to another human romantically. And that's the continual deconstructing these narratives, like really deconstructing that narrative, like really looking at where it is, because let's be real. I think most people already know this, but I think it bears to say that how did marriage start? Like if we're really looking at romance and the idea of romance and marriage, uh, man and woman joining to share property. Ownership and property. So romantic. It's, <laughs> it's capitalism. It's capitalism. Well, and that's the other piece that I wanted to add too, is like part of the reason it's so important when we talk about embodying this and doing all our own work is we still live in a, a society where there is systemic support for a certain kind of love and yes. a certain kind of couple and a certain image and that still exists. And so if we want to combat that, yes, there are, there's the activism, there's the legal routes, there's all of that, but we have to, I mean, maybe the radical really is a big part of this actually, Kayla, like maybe we do need to go that big in terms of what we're embodying because we have so much systemically working against us. Well, yeah. And the, and the pressure and the, the images that we see and the, the content is so geared towards patriarchal capitalism, white supremacy. How do all of these structures act to support and influence these ideas and so then as queer people we're just like well fuck that narrative like i'm wearing all black on valentine's day <laughs> and high school was wearing all black but then but then also again re reclamation of being like i'm gonna take this these this concept of love and make it our own Plus, don't we need another like day to wear all our pride stuff besides just in June? Like, isn't this a great day to like bring out all my rainbows and my hearts and like 
just spread love around the world. Oh, heck yeah. I have my trans socks on. Like, yeah. and I spray, like, pull up my high, you know, my high knee trans socks. My yeah. On. Yeah. And go <laughs> out and find all the queer bakery shops and like food trucks and like, get my love of food on yeah for sure <laughs> oh and of course hang out with a friend it was also an ex yeah gotta, do that. <laughs> gotta make it as queer as possible <laughs> Kind of shared a queer duo already, but I, you know, let's start with you, Melissa. And I can always add another one because just the more queer joy, the merrier. I love it. Well, especially like, you know, coming off of this holiday for some people, this, this was a tough day and is still a yeah. tough day. And so let's bring all the joy we can, you know, uh, for sure. I'm coming off of the joy of the glorious weather we had up in Portland this last weekend. It was sunny and warm. For me, I don't know. Some people were like really still bundled up and I was outside with like a tank top goosebumps for sure. But I'm like, son. <laughs> so I just, you know, we did this great workshop. I had so much energy coming off of that. And I took myself on one of those self dates <laughs> and went out and just got to enjoy some music and some people around on the patio and really took in as much sun as I could. And it kind of drained me. I forgot. And it's not even like summer sun where you sit out and you're like completely drained. After no, it was but Portland sun. It was Portland yeah. sun. Portland February sun. But still, I came home and was like, oh, I could use a nap. Like, that was great. So, yeah, I, I'm really, really grateful. I, um, I'm a big, like, my space is really important to me. So, like, aesthetics of where I'm living. And so I took down the snowflakes decals. I had little decals on my window <laughs> to make winter, like, a little bit brighter for me in Portland. And I know we're not into spring yet. But I did take down the snowflakes. So we are, we're getting there. <laughs> getting close to spring. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would say my queer joy or one of the queer joys I experienced was just going out for dessert, getting out and hanging out with a friend. And it was kind of nostalgic for those who listeners who are in Portland may know Papa Hyden's. And it's been around for a long time. It's the dessert only place, but they have like gluten-free stuff now. And they vegan, they definitely did not have gluten-free when I was in high school, for sure. And I just had a nice time being outside. And like you said, yeah, it was actually warm enough to be outside, just having dessert, enjoying a lot of food today. <laughs> dessert, enjoying the dessert. So that was my, you know, and it was a fellow, fellow, fellow queer friend. And I really have enjoyed, I will say, I am on this interesting journey of trying out dating apps and trying out different dating apps. I think that's going to be an episode. I can't wait to hear. <laughs> I think we're going to have to do this. We just, we're looking, hey, if anyone's listening and wants to like come on as a guest and does like the dating thing, please DM us. Yeah. And who's an expert on, on dating apps and like queer dating apps? Queer dating apps, creating the dating app because... I'm in this place where I'm like, okay, I'll do the app thing, but can you help me create it? Because mm -hmm. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Oh, oh, dang it. No, I wanted to say, okay, I have another queer guy real quick. Yay, add it, add it. <laughs> <About this. laughs> because throughout my life, I've been out as queer for many, 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 many years. However, I often was like cis hetero female passing. And my haircut. I was in a Lush store. Person comes up and is like talking to me, like total queer coded. Like they just like came up to me and started chatting about all the things queer and how they're a drag queen. And and at Lush, there was a display that said something, something, my non-binary child I'm so proud of. Oh, that's wonderful. Like Lush finally is like embracing and recognizing all the queers. Cause I mean, believe me, whenever I go into Lush, there are tons of queer folks. Plus I would say like 80% are the people working on the staff are queer. So they're like recognizing. So fucking queering up Lush. Hell yeah. So that was a very, very high up there queer joy. That's amazing. That's like, uh, uh, you're saying that I'm like, we need our list. Of, well, I'm sure someone already has this. 
I still feel like I'm relatively new to Portland, having moved in the middle of a pandemic. Where I'm, oh, yeah. And like Lush sounds like one of the, the spots on the queer hangout list. <laughs> oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to get your queer joy. Oh, yeah. yeah. And and there's a Lush and then um, Petunias. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's definitely scenes. Y'all add your own thing. These are my things that I, I <laughs> yeah. my queer joys, add your others. But queer joys that definitely involve a lot of queers. Harlow, Harlow's right by there. Shout out. None of these people are, I mean, if you want to send us some products, Lush, please do so. But by the way, no one supported us on this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's a wrap for today. I do want to mention that we are doing our next workshop on March 24th. I kept saying March 25th. Correction, correction, correction. March 24th. And then we have our group starting up. So we're really doing a lot of work around non-monogamy polyamory all the things. And again, in a couple of weeks, we actually get to have another interview with a couple that has been practicing nominating for many years. So that'll be fun. And otherwise, anything else we want to plug, Melissa? No, I think, I think that covers it. I, I would say just keep reaching out to us. You know, the wonderful thing about the workshop was being able to connect with people real time. I'm interested in hearing people's feedback episode to episode. As we've said, we're not yeah. like experts and, and the only voices, you know, to add to these conversations. So please let us know how things are hitting you and what also what you'd like to hear. Well, awesome. Thanks again for listening. And I hope all of you have a queer and joyful week. Thanks for listening to Queer Relationships, Queer Joy, a podcast by the Connective Therapy Collective. Hosted by Keely C. Helmick and Melissa DeSeguron, with audio edited and produced by me, Cardinal Marking. Intro music is by Bad Snacks. Outro music by Victoria Instrumental. If this episode made you smile or think, tell us about it. If you hated it, tell us about that. Review us on iTunes or Spotify. Yes, you can review on Spotify now. Or send us an email at info at connectivetherapycollective.com. For information on our workshops and for more queer joy, visit our website at connectivetherapycollective.com. Love ya. Bye.